welcome to another Looney Tunes commentary. If this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a commentary for Inky and the Minor Bird, released in 1943. It's the 415th in the series and it's directed by Chuck Jones. You can find the I guess on the Golden Age of Looney Tunes Volume 3 Laserdisc set. I doubt we'll see a restoration anytime soon. I do have to make the warning about there being a stereotype character in the form of Inky, but I do discuss all of that in the Little Lion Hunter commentary and I don't really want to repeat myself too much here. But with me today are my two fellow lions, Blue Genesi and SC McPeter. Say hi guys. Hello. I'm human. My friend Aaron is the lion. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we are. And, you know, this cartoon was made pretty much because Inky and the Lion, even though it was made before I guess Chuck became funny, supposedly, even though that one actually wasn't that bad, it was a bit of a surprise hit. So Chuck ended up making this one, which of course made After Dover Boys and it ends up being a much funnier short as a result, but then he wouldn't make another Inky for another few years. So that was kind of weird. So um, I think it might've had to do something with maybe the buyout of the studio mm -hmm. that caused Inky to kind of disappear for a little bit. I know that um, I believe that the reason Inky returned the for the second and third cartoon is because of reception of each cartoon. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite quite possible, quite possible. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, I do admire about this short, even in this washed out state, are the backgrounds. Once again, um, I mean, there always seem to be a feature in the in these Chuck Jones shorts. But uh, well, he's he's blue, the guy that can kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love I was just gonna, I was just gonna say uh, the backgrounds in this short in particular remind me a lot of the Taz cartoons from the 50s I don't, I don't know why yeah. I guess the, just the, the jungle environment maybe yeah wow you, and actually now that you mention it actually that's a very good yeah. point but yeah you, by then you, they were starting to like stylize it. the backgrounds and Taz was introduced and since Chuck had sort of stylized backgrounds fair statement Wow. But I love this line. Like the poses on this line and some of the animation on it are just absolutely fantastic. I mean, if you watch this cartoon and just pay attention to the line, you, you know, you'll, you'll at least have a good time time there. Now, um, SC, you were mentioning to me before we started recording um, about uh, one particular animator who worked in, in this one. Um, so that was Seamus, wasn't it? Yeah, Seamus Colhane, or as he was called by this time, I believe Jim Colhane. And he was a very experienced animator. He started out Fleischer's, he worked at Disney, he animated on he made the high ho sequence at Snow White. Very experienced animator. And he ended up joining Warner Bros. expecting to direct Navy cartoons, but Leon had no plans of that and he left after solely animating on this cartoon. He does most of his animation on the line. I think he's doing some of the lion stuff around here. And there's a great story about him on this cartoon where he spent the entire week not drawing and Chuck and Ben Washam were afraid that he was going to get fired and such. Then Friday afternoon, he turned out the entire quota of footage. He said that he spent the entire week thinking about his process and how he was going to do it. Wow. That's, that's just insane. It kind of reminds me of my days in, in, in a high school and university where I would tend to leave things to the last minute, but then I would just turn out an entire school report and then hand it in and I'll still get a higher mark. And I don't know, it's just different it processes right for now. different people. <laughs> that sounds like my editing strategy. Well, great minds make alike. Yeah, I think having a deadline, you know, pushes people, especially if you're a freelancer. You got to give for that. But this joke here, you know, involving the disappearing minor bird, and then later on you have the disappearing lion, and that it's so it kind of feels out of place, and yet it does feel like it's in place at the same time. It's a really, really bizarre joke. Chuck talked a lot about the Yankees after he said that they didn't really understand it because it was sort of fourth dimension and chuck didn't understand the fourth dimension which is a fair comparison they are pretty abstract in just a way that you can't explain mm. and i like the backgrounds here with, with the lot in the lion's cave how it's got, mm. got like a i guess tribal patterns um so blue any um any thoughts on this particular inky have you seen this one before i didn't even honestly no i had never seen an inky cartoon ever in my life until we did the commentary on the first one and what what i can see from this one 
is that it is a lot funnier than the last couple because I think we've done like two of them so far haven't we yeah there's only been two there's um yeah, Little Lion Hunter and Inky and the Lion right mm -hmm. and I have to say this one is definitely an improvement over those two yep that's I like really all I got to say for one, I like the Inkies for how they showed Chuck some improvements as a director since the first three were each made two years apart so you can really get the sense of his evolution by just watching them in order yeah that's a, that's, a, that's actually a very good point but look at the line here like, like like it feels like water the way he's walking it's just yeah the line is really bizarre and yet it, and yet it works it looks really I'd, yeah I'd have to guess this was Seamus animation because it looks a little rough and I can't imagine turning out all your turning out 20 seconds of animation on a Friday afternoon couldn't couldn't be anything but rough yeah for sure but what do you think blue like do you th what do you think of this line animation here yeah it's very Hanna -Bar Barbera esque wow I'm not sure why but no nah, fair enough I think it's I, just I, the I, exaggerated I, 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 features yeah the, because if you look at the other Chuck Jones shorts, you know, before and after this one, there's no character that I recall being animated like that. It, it definitely feels a little bit out of place, and yet it's really nice to look at. Yeah, I kind of wish Seamus actually stayed as an animator. He does some really good stuff. I think he would have fitted very well after a few months. Mm. Right. Yeah, I know that yeah, he oh. said in his um, biography, which I highly recommend, called Talking Animals and Other People, that he enjoyed working at Warner Bros. He just didn't like that he was scammed out of his Navy unit. Ah, fair enough. And that's a, yeah, got the, got the big WTF ending right there. Yep. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It's a solid short. It's a, it really is. Um, you know, despite, you know, I think his character w wouldn't be acceptable today, but that's a uh, you know, whole other topic, of course. And, uh, <laughs> what a great <laughs> ending with the smile there. So thanks very much for listening, guys. And until next time, take care. That's all, folks. Farewell. <laughs>